So with mixing on GarageBand, really what we're doing is, is kind of mixing exactly as it used to be done on a mixing desk and with a, a tape recorder, all that sort of thing, except of course this is in one package. So you can see this is my cover of Together in Electric Dreams and you can see this on my channel by clicking on the link at the top right of the screen uh, and you can yeah have a look at that. Um, I'm just going to show you a bit about mixing and how I've done it, including when and when not to use compression. Now, at the moment, we're going to start with the vocals here. Uh, this is the lead vocal, and this is just the input um, um, sh showing on the left here. So this isn't actually the channel playing back. It's me talking and the level picking it up. But when I play it back, you'll hear that the, the word, um, the, the syllable re uh, that you will hear in a minute is louder than everything else. Sometimes it's hard to recognize. Recognize the recognize. I obviously sang that louder. Um, so I've got to find a way of making that vocal sit on top of the entire mix. Uh, and the way to do that is to use a compressor. Now, if I go to the slider uh, icon here, oh, sorry, wrong button. I pressed the one next to it. Um, there we go. So. I'm on my lead vocal pane now, and if I go to plugins and EQ, there's a, a channel called Compressor here, uh, which is switched off at the moment. Now, if I switch it on, and at the same time just open up the page to show you the controls, I'm going to play back that same little bit again here, um, and uh, just show you what's going on with that. So, same bit again. Sometimes it's hard to recognize. The ret of recognize has now been smoothed off by the compressor. Now, this is um, this is really important. The human voice is very capable of a huge range of sounds. You can whisper next to somebody, or you can shout across a valley, and somebody can hear the other side of the the, the, the you know the valley floor. You know, it's we we are extremely powerful animals when it comes to our voices, um, and because of that you need to be able to smooth out those loud and soft things so that it sits on the mix. Now, the five controls that are showing here, uh, compressor threshold is the first one. Now, what that does is it determines the amount of level, recording level or playback level, needed to actually make the compressor start working. So if I set the threshold to all the way to the top, it's not going to do anything. Sometimes it's hard to recognize. So the same problem befell that particular take in that the ret of recognize was all was much louder. Now if I go the, exactly the other way, it's going to compress everything and it'll sound a little bit artificial and a bit pumped. Sometimes it's hard to recognize that comes up. So just that sharp um, intake of breath before that uh, final word that you heard there is because what's happened is it's squashed the loud sounds so much that it's actually brought the, the quiet sounds up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set the compressor to about minus 20 dB. Now, the values given here are obviously very important, but they're quite arbitrary at the moment because you don't actually know what level you've recorded at. All you do, all you get is a graphical representation of what you've recorded. So it's really up to your ears. Your ears are the ultimate judge. So when you're making adjustments, it's a good idea to close your eyes when you're playing back. Sometimes it's hard to recognize that comes as a surprise. Okay, I can hear everything there. I can hear all the words, but there's still a little bit of dynamics in there. Uh, and this is what uh, a compressor falls under in terms of logic plugins. It's always under dynamics, and that's all to do with loud and soft. So the next control down, ratio essentially determines how much the compressor is actually going to squash that sound. So a ratio of one to one won't make any difference. So I'll end up with my loud syllable again. 
so it's just like the compressor being off so for vocals really anything anywhere between about three and six to one is a good a good sort of benchmark now because i'm recording over a sort of an electro pop quite loud set of instruments i've set the ratio a little bit higher 5.4 to one now the next control down attack on a professional compressor, you also get a control called release, which is the opposite. And attack is a measure of how quickly it takes after the compressor detects a loud level that it'll squash it down. Now, this is quite useful in that you can still have the sort of louder attack uh, of the initial note there, but it squashes the overall level of what comes afterwards. So. I'll just uh, play that back again. If I set the attack to very, very short, zero milliseconds, Sometimes it's hard to recognize. It took the beginning of the R off as well, of recognize, and I didn't want it to do that. So if I set it all the way the other way, Sometimes it's hard to recognize. I saw some of that ret of recognize. Now it's still a little bit loud for me, so I'm just going to set the attack somewhere in the middle. Now, obviously set that at your at your leisure, whatever sounds good. It's all about your ears, don't forget. Now, the next control down, gain. This is something, this is a corrective measure for compression in that you need to be able to uh, make up for any loss of volume because of the compressor kicking in. Um, now, sometimes you can set it to, on some compressors, you can set auto gain where it actually essentially does it all for you. But the gain control is useful if you've lost a bit of level. So if I vary the gain, you can hear the vocal going up and down in the mix, but it's still being compressed. So the order of the um, controls here really does reflect the order of the, uh, the, the signal in the circuit. Times it's hard to recognize that comes as a surprise and it's so it's a little bit like the level meter but if you set it right it means you've got the finest control in your level meter and the finest control here on this meter is when it's about two-thirds of the way up as it is now so if you set your gain up you've got very fine uh, control here. It's like two thirds of the way up on a fader on a mixing desk. It's the same sort of thing. And then lastly, we have mix. Now this determines how much of the compressor is inserted into that chain, into the, the, the chain of effects. 0% means there's no compression and 100 is maximum. I would set it at 100 so that you can hear the compressor working. So there are some other um, effects on here as well, which we'll go through for particular tracks. So if I just just get rid of that now and I'm just going to have a look at my other parts here. Now all of these green bits are the synth parts, all the synth instruments on GarageBand which are of course highly uh, capable sounds in their own right. Now just while I'm here, uh, the vocals, anything you record with a microphone is going to pick up some low end. So uh, I mean bass response like sort of B of B or any rumble that's in the room or the mic might be the iPad might be sort of vibrating against the table if you sat next to it all that sort of thing so if I solo the vocals out and play back this um, second verse what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the pane again and look at my visual EQ now you can see that I've cut the bass here. Now this is good practice on anything that doesn't require bass, which is everything except the kick drum, the bass guitar or bass synthesizers. If you just cut a little bit of bass, it makes it much easier to mix everything together. So if I just play the solo by the, the voice by itself. Times it's hard to recognize, but comes as a surprise and it's too late. So there, it's just amplifying a lot of very low frequencies, which I don't need because the vocals are in this sort of range, in the mid range here. So I've cut really below 100 hertz. Um, I've just taken sort of 10 dB off and that should suffice. You don't want to take too much off. If I put it back into context and play it. It's just too late to stay, too late to stay be together. So there we go. I'm just going to take it to minus 10 dB. 
and that's because you can tell I just took all the body away. Now at the other end I've compensated for the slight lack in top end response of the iPad mic by just adding a bit of treble. I've actually added quite a lot here. Once again your ears are the judge. Maybe if I just take it down a little bit it might just sound a little less tinny. Sometimes it's hard to recognize that comes as a surprise but I'm trying to make the S sounds of that vocal go with that hi-hat sample a little bit better. So the hi-hat's not all trebly and there's no um, sort of definition in the vocals, no sibilance. So I'll click done there for now. Now all of the sounds at the beginning, all of these synth sounds, these have been very carefully programmed by all the team at Apple and GarageBand and all the consultants that they've had in. So for example, the guitar, the uh, distorted guitar sound that I had a bit at the beginning, um, that's already had its very sort of low bass end cut so that it makes it easy to mix. So if you were recording a guitar amp, you'd want to do the same trick as I've done with the vocals. Just take the very lowest bass end off. So there's enough body of the guitar there, but it doesn't go sort of hell for leather at the bass end there. So all of your sounds, what I tend to do is to mix the bass and the drums first. Now, I always try and make the bass drum occupy a lower frequency band than the bass guitar. Lots of people are very tempted to add lots and lots of very, very ultra low end to the bass, but actually the bass sounds punchier when you have a, a sort of a boost at about sort of 100 or maybe 150. Now, in order to do this successfully without boosting that, I would just drag the middle one here and just give it a little bit of a lift there. And then the bass drum on the drum machine, I could actually have that bass a little bit lower. Oh, just wait for those drums and bass. So the bass drum is occupying a different frequency space to the bass guitar, and that means that you can uh, you are listening to different sort of sections of the the orchestra, as it were, without the two things vying for the same space. Now everything else I've got here is really um, devoid of low end entirely. So your bass guitar is nice and defined in the very low register there. So um, electric piano, there's uh, all sorts of other. Okay. lots and lots of backing vocals here I've got a lot of parts that I've recorded now really what you should be doing is cutting the bass on all of these channels so if I just go to my plugins and EQ you can see that I haven't yet done that naughty boy so I'm just going to take all of those now this yeah well you can do all of them you just have to just do it do it on each one Notice how that if you make adjustments and the visual EQ was off, as it is on this track, it'll automatically switch it on as well. There we go. So I'm just going to play those three vocal parts back and you can hear... Love never ends. <laughs> Love never ends, absolutely. So there's no need to be any uh, for any bass there, but you might hear it if you've... Um, for example, I recorded this in the toilet don't ask me why, but I did. Um, so I've got, um, you, you'll see that on the video as well. Um, not actually on the toilet. Uh, you, you, yeah, I'm just sat, yeah, I'll just stop now while the going's good. So if I just go back here and play those vocals again with the bass on. Love never ends. The, between love and never, there was a sort of little low frequency sort of. Love never 
you don't need that in there because it will get in the way of your rhythmic um, sort of uh, work on the bass and the drums. You don't want that there. So if I just do that um, and do the um, the opposite and play that back, you'll hear that it's that sound is now, now sort of largely gone. Love never ends. And there we go. So there is a brief sort of um, explanation, and I've also compressed those backing vocals just like I did with the main vocal. Now. The other thing you've got to do is obviously prepare this for um, sort of mixing down and making sure that it all sounds good on iTunes. Now, it is possible to do a little bit of mastering on GarageBand. As I said before, you can, you can add an effects channel uh, by recording a little bit of the, um, the filter here that you've got. All you need to do is record a tiny bit, delete it, but you'll still notice that the effects channel is there. On the, on the effects channel, you have a master EQ as well, visual, visual EQ. So you can make fine adjustments to your general equalization of your tune. So if you're slightly, if it's slightly deficient in bass, just notch it up a bit and it'll just do a, a general sort of thing for you. Now, the only trouble with GarageBand is that it's hard to achieve that maximum level that you would find on anything else on iTunes or the original version of this, for example, and that's because it's been taken to a mastering facility. Now, you can do a little bit on here. If you notice on the equalization pane, we have a master gain control. So if your tune is sounding a little bit quiet, generally, you can bring this control up. However, there is a maximum level, and you just heard it just then. It was really pumpy when I put it up to 30. It sounds really slappy there, and the reverbs are really loud. So the idea, the best idea, is to set it as high as you can while retaining that sort of punchy dynamic of the original. I only knew you for a while never saw your smile till it was time to go time to go away now you don't have any control over the compression that's happening there like you have with the attack on the channel compressor now that's just something that uh it's, yeah it's just a restriction of garage band but you can make something sound a little bit more energetic in this manner where you can take the mid-range up a bit lots of people forget about mid-range in a mix uh, they sort of think about the bass end and whether cymbals are crisp and all that but there's a lot going on in the mid-range generally um with vocals and synth sounds and all that sort of thing so never forget your mids and actually you might have have a have something that sounds a bit more punchy if you just bring the mids up slightly anyway there is an intro to a bit of mixing on garage band and hopefully that compressor will prove useful <laughs> 